Are they scary looking? They're a little scary looking. But we are going to work to make them less scary looking. Okay? <laughs> All right, really quick before we get started, um, I'm going to tell you about a couple videos I have linked right over there. Okay? The first is, right now we are solving multi-step equations with fractions. Okay? If you don't need the fraction part yet, you just need solving multi-step equations, bam, right over there. If you're not quite to multi-step equations yet, you need to solve two-step equations, you got it, right over there. Also, I'm going to go really detailed in this video if you don't need that much detail. I've got another video over there where I do two-step equations, multi-step equations, um, and some other variations where I go a bit quicker. Um, right over there also. So wherever you need to be, be there. Okay, fractions are scary, but they don't have to be, okay? I am going to show you two different ways you can do each of these problems, okay? Hopefully you're not sick of the sound of my voice by the time we're done. But I just want you to take whichever way makes sense to you and do that, okay? So these first, this first one, all my denominators, that's the number on the bottom of a fraction, they're all the same, right? They're all threes. And these ones, they're all different, okay? You could get both, either or. So I thought I would cover both, okay? So we're going to start here, okay? First thing when I'm solving, remember my whole goal here is to have x equals something. That's what my answer will look like, x equals something. The first thing I need to do is make sure... All my X's are together, all my not X's are together, okay? So combine like terms. So here's my X's, okay? So I've got 7 thirds X minus 5 thirds X, okay? When we subtract fractions, the denominators must be the same. Happy day, they're already the same, okay? When you add or subtract, the bottom will stay that common denominator and the top is what you subtract seven minus five gives me two so when i take seven thirds x subtract five thirds x i get two thirds x not too bad right all right then we've still got plus one third equals five thirds okay now there's two ways you could do this i'm going to show you one way here one way here okay first way is I trying to get x alone, right? So I'm going to get rid of this plus one third by subtracting one third. Okay. If I do it to this side, I must do it to this side. Usually I write it below, but since it's fractions, I'm just going to write it off to this side here. Those go away, right? So on this side, I'm left with two thirds x equals, remember when we add or subtract fractions, denominators must be the same. Happy day, they already are. So the denominator is going to stay 3. 5 minus 1 gives me 4. Okay, so I've got 2 thirds x equals 4 thirds. Okay, now we're going to do what is called, are you ready for a big word? Reciprocal. You know, if you want to sound smart, just say it a couple times. Reciprocal. A reciprocal is a fraction flipped. Why does it even matter? Because when I multiply this side by the reciprocal, which would be three over two. When I have a number over itself, it's just one, right? Two divided by two is one. Three divided by three is one. So guess what? I'm just left with one X over there. Fractions, gone. Happy birthday, okay? But I can't forget, I times this side by three halves, the reciprocal of this. So I have to times this side also by three halves. Whatever I times this side by, I have to times this side by. Okay, so we are left with x equals, okay, four thirds times three halves. There's two ways I can do this. When we multiply, multiplying fractions is much easier than adding or subtracting them. You just multiply straight across, okay? So there's two ways I can do this. I can multiply straight across, get 12 over six, which simplifies down to, 12 divided by 6 is 2. So that's my answer. The other way you could think of this is like we've said, um, a number over itself is 1, right? As long as everything's just being multiplied. 
And then 4 can be written as 2 times 2, right? So that 2 and that 2 cancel, and I'm just left with 1, 2 on the top. Look at that. Oh my gosh, we took that scary thing and just made x equals 2. Okay, there is another way to do this, which can be quicker. Oh, quicker, you say? Okay, so uh, beginning step is just the same. Just combining those, which we said was 2 thirds x plus 1 third equals 5 thirds. Okay, when I see, oh my gosh, everything is being divided by a 3. Guess what magical thing I can do? Okay, I'm going to times this entire side by 3. If I do it to this side, i got to do it to this side. This entire side by 3. Okay, this 3 gets what we call distributed in. It must be multiplied by both of these. Okay, now look, when I multiply it by this, I get 3 times 2 over 3. So that 3 and that 3 cancel each other out. Okay, when I multiply it to this one, it's 3 times 1 over 3. This 3 and that 3 cancel each other out. So guess what I'm left with over here? 2x plus 1 equals, hopefully you're ahead of me, there's a 5 times 3 over 3. Oh, 3 and 3, they cancel each other out. So that equals 5. Now, if you wanted to multiply this out, you could, because guess what? 5 times 3 would give you 15 over 3. And that simplifies down to 5, which is what we got. Okay? Now, this is easy. Subtract 1 from both sides. I get 2x equals 4. Divide by 2. And I get x equals 2. Look at that. Okay? Two ways to do it. Both got the right answer. So... And you can always, always check, plug that back in and make sure. Okay. But I hear you say, what if they're not all pretty like that? Ugh. That's when it's a little annoying, but it's okay. All right. So again, I'm going to show you two ways. First way. Same thing. We are combining like terms. So the two terms that have an A with them, I'm combining. Okay. So I've got one half a plus two thirds a. Remember to add or subtract fractions, the denominators must be the same. Okay, so one half a plus two thirds a. I try and think of the smallest number that both two and three go into. The smallest number they both go into is six. Okay, so. I'm going to be adding two fractions that have a denominator of 6 that are equivalent to these fractions, okay? 2 times what gives me 6? 2 times 3 gives me 6, right? Now, to make it so I'm just changing how this fraction looks, I'm not changing its actual value, I times by 3 over 3. Why? Because 3 over 3 is 1, so I'm just timesing this by 1, not simplified. Okay, was that a big, large chunk to say? Hopefully that made sense, okay? So, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3. Now, doesn't 3 over 6 simplify to 1 half? Yes. So it's the same fraction, just written to look a little different so that I can add, okay? 3 times what gives me 6? Oh, 3 times 2. Now, if I times the bottom by 2, i got to times the top by 2. So then I'm timesing by 2 over 2, which is 1. Okay? 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? So I've got 3 sixths plus 4 sixths. Try saying sixths a lot of times. <laughs> okay, so bottom stays the same. 6. 3 plus 4 gives me 7. And I can't forget that we have an A. Okay? Okay, so we combined like terms. We did this, okay? So now, so I'm going to put a little line over here so we know like, oh, that was its own little party over there, figuring that out. So now I've got this went down to 7 6 A. We're still adding 3 fourths equals 1 6, okay? These aren't like terms, so I can't combine them. So I need to get rid of this guy. Because remember, my whole goal is to get A equals something, okay? So I'm going to subtract 3 fourths from both sides. I need to do it on both sides of the equal sign. Those go away. 
All right, I'm gonna come write this over here. So I'm left with seven sixths, sixths A <laughs> equals, all right, one sixth minus three fourths. What is the smallest number they both go into? It's 12, okay? So I'm going to be subtracting two fractions that are both over 12. Now, how did I turn a six into a 12? I multiplied it by two. If I do it on bottom, I have to do it on top. So I'm just really multiplying it by a one, two over two. So one times two is two. What did I multiply four by to get 12? I multiplied it by three. If I do it on bottom, I need to do it on the top. Three times three gives me nine. All right, so one sixth is the same as two twelfths. This one's just not simplified. Same with three fourths and nine twelfths. Okay. So now I know my answer is going to be over 12. Two minus nine. Your kindergarten teacher told you you could not do that. And then you got older and someone was like, psych, you can. So if I have $2, I want to buy something for $9. If I buy that, I would be negative $7, right? $7 in debt. Okay, so this was that second piece here. That's what this is equal to. So negative seven twelfths. We're feeling good. Okay, now we're gonna do this reciprocal fun again. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal of this because I'm trying to get A alone, right? Why am I not multiplying by this reciprocal? Well, I could, but it wouldn't help me get to the answer. So I'm gonna multiply by this guy's reciprocal. So both sides times by six sevenths because six over six gives me one, seven over seven gives me one. So I'm just left with one A where A equals. Okay, I could multiply this out and simplify it, but I notice here, oh, I've got seven over seven. So those cancel each other out. That's just one. And then 12 can be written as two times six, right? And then this six and this six cancel. I can't forget my negative here. So if both things cancel on top, it's just a one. So I've got one, remember it's negative, over the 12 went to two times six and the six got canceled out. So all I'm left with on the bottom is a two. Look at that, A equals negative one half. But you said we were gonna get rid of all the fractions. Sorry, we almost did. We got it down to just one fraction, right? Okay, <laughs> all right, we're gonna do this problem again but do it like this, where we just get rid of the fractions, okay? All right, so they're all different, but I look at all four of them and think, what is the lowest number two, three, four, and six all go into? It's 12, okay? So watch what happens if I multiply both sides by 12. Okay. I could add these first, mm, it's up to you. We're not going to, because we're just gonna show you what happens when we multiply by 12. Then we don't even have to worry about getting denominators the same. Okay, remember when I multiply this whole side by 12, it is being multiplied to every single fraction here. Okay, so this is really 12 times one over two, right? Now 12 can be written as two times six, right? And then this two and this two cancel, and all I'm left with on top is six times one, which is just six, right? So this just turned to six, can't forget my A. Oh, that's not bad. All right, 12 times two thirds is 12 times two over three. Now 12 can be written as three times four, and then look, this three and this three cancel. And on top, I'm left with four times two, which is eight, A, K. Now you always could too, just do 12 times two is 24, divided by three is eight, if you don't wanna think of all the canceling, okay? Whichever works better for you. So this one is 12 times three over four. Again, I could do 36 divided by four and get nine. Or I could realize, oh, this is three times four, this and this cancel. I'm left on top with three times three, which is nine. Oh, there's no A on that one, okay? So look, 
not so scary anymore, right? Now this one is 12, gonna be 12 over six, which simplifies to two. Whoa. This isn't as scary now, right? All right, six plus eight gives me 14a. Plus nine equals two. Now this is just not bad at all, right? I'm trying to get a alone, so I'm gonna subtract nine from both sides. 14a equals two minus nine. Again, we talked about that over here. It's negative seven. Okay, I want a all by itself. This is being multiplied, so I'm gonna divide. Divide. A equals negative seven fourteenths. Simplifies down to negative one half because seven goes into seven once and seven goes into seven twice. Okay. Okay. That was a lot of words and numbers and fractions at you. Hopefully it made sense. <laughs> Hopefully it helped you with any problems you ran into. Hope you can get your homework done and go to bed and have dreams of math that aren't nightmares.